Hello, hello, hello. The solution to problem 166, an electromagnet with small air gap. We will assume that the magnetic field is azimuthal. Magnetic monopoles do not exist. B field lines therefore form closed loops and the number of lines will therefore be continuous across the air-steel interface in the gap. Thus the magnetic field strength in the gap will be approximately equal to the magnetic field strength in the steel. Here you see the geometry. I will get back to that very shortly. In the presence of materials with non-zero magnetic susceptibility, Ampere's law without Maxwell's correction becomes this. Closed loop line integral of B dot TL divided by kappa M is mu zero times I N closed. I don't like the word enclosed, but that's a separate issue. I will explain what it really means. Kappa M is the relative permeability. Applying this form of Ampere's law to the dashed loop and shaded open surface in the diagram. Closed loop, this is the dashed curve, the closed loop, goes through the steel for about 44 centimeters and then two and a half millimeters through the gap. Radius seven centimeters, D is two and a half millimeters, 120 turns and the current is 15 amperes. And what counts now? is the current that goes to the open surface. I chose the open surface to be flat. That is not necessary. It can have any bulged shape as long as it is attached to that closed loop. And the current that penetrates through that open surface is what matters in Ampere's law, which in this case is n times i, because the current goes n times through that open surface. And that is what people then call i and closed. So here again you see what I already mentioned, 120 turns, 15 amperes, 7 centimeters, and the gap is 2.5 millimeters. So now Ampere's law has two parts. One part which is the steel, which has a kappa M of 2500, and then the gap, for which kappa M is very close to one. It's about the same in air as it is in vacuum. So this is rewriting of this Ampere's law, taking into account that there is a steel part and that there is a a gap part in air. Kappa M in one is one in air to a very good approximation. Note that the total current through our open surface is Ni. I just mentioned that because the wire cuts the surface n times. Now with our knowledge that B in the gap is approximately the same as B in steel, this B is the same as this B. So now we have two parts. We have the steel part and we have the air part. So that B is the same in both. And so this is the steel part. That is the 44 centimeters minus the two and a half millimeters and they have a kappa M of 2500. This is the part through the gap, for which K 
kappa m is 1. So it is a rewriting of Ampere's law. Now since 2 pi r minus d is approximately 2 pi r, 2 pi r is about 176 times larger than d, you can, of course, ignore this d. But not this one. But you can ignore this one. So now you write it down, you write it out, you know everything. You know mu zero, you know n, you know i, you know 2 pi r, kappa m, and you know d. And there you go. You see here mu zero is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. Number of turns, amperes, the 2 pi, 7 centimeters, 2500 for this one. And the D is two and a half millimeters and out pops 0.85 Tesla. I think if you're more precise, 0.845, we call it 0.85 Tesla. There are two points worth mentioning here, and that is very important. First, our assumption that the B in the gap is the same as B in the steel is only good if the width of the gap is small compared to the cross-sectional radius of the electromagnet. The cross-sectional surface is 4 square centimeter. So the cross-sectional radius is about 1.1 centimeters. And so it is only a good approximation if the two and a half millimeters of the gap is much, much smaller than the 1.1 centimeters. In fact, fringing fields will cause the magnetic field to be less than in the steel. So you can no longer assume that the magnetic field in the gap is the same as in the steel. It bulges out in the gap, and therefore its field will be less than the magnetic field in the steel. And the problem gets worse as the gap gets wider compared to the cross-sectional radius. Second, and I printed this in blue because this is so important. Notice that even though d is much, much smaller than 2 pi r, 2 pi r is about 175 times D, it's 175 times D. The major contribution to the integral is this. And that comes from the gap. Because kappa M is 1 versus 2500 in the steel. So in the case that D is zero, the field is 12.9, about 12.9 Tesla. And that is about 15 times higher than 0.85 Tesla. And it is very non-intuitive that the two and a half millimeter gap lowers the field by a factor of 15. So it all comes down to the fact that kappa m through the steel has a 2500 here, but it is 1 through the gap, and so the gap dominates. That is very non-intuitive. Yes, 
if D were zero, you would think that makes hardly any difference, but makes a huge difference. The field then, everywhere in the steel, would be about 13 Tesla, 15 times higher than 0.85 Tesla. Okay, um, the number of people who have this right is uh, about seven. I published this problem five days ago, uh, so I may get a few more correct solutions. I will post it two days from now, I think. For me, today is March 17, by the way, 2023. If you can't do this problem, no reason to feel bad. Would I have been able to do this in my high school? Maybe, maybe, but I am not sure. Certainly, a JEE problem, this could be a JEE problem. So, the most important for you, if you cannot do this problem, is that there is no question we will remain friends. Because being friends is the most important, is the strongest conservation law in all of physics.